somewhere around 30 years ago, I first heard this idea that human beings have these three primary needs. One is for significance, to believe we have worth. One is for security, to believe that what we have is not going to be taken away from us. And the third is for acceptance, which is that people will always have an attitude of acceptance towards us, so we always belong to our people. Well, since that time, I put it to the test. Is that what is in Scripture? Does the Bible show that we that our significance is important to God? And the answer is yes, very much. Does it show us that God wants us to be secure? Yes, it absolutely does. Does the, the Bible teach us that acceptance is a really important thing to our design as human beings? And of course, the answer is absolutely. Today, I want to focus on that, that second one, security, because it came up in the scripture I'm reading in the book of Micah. And I've been sharing how Micah 6 verse 8 tells us that God has told us what is good, what is morally excellent, and what he requires of us, which is to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. So I'm going through Micah to see how God develops that, how he teaches us the importance of it. And I've come to chapter 5, verses 4 and 5, and this is what it says. And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. Now, when it says, and he shall stand, the word stand means to rise up for the purpose of taking action. So, we are given a prophecy that applies to Jesus when he was born in Bethlehem, he began his ministry, and he laid down his life. That whole reality of the life of Jesus Christ, we're told that Jesus came to stand, which means he came into the world to take action, which of course is fulfilled in the new covenant in Jesus' blood. When it says that he came to shepherd his flock, shepherd means to rule over a group of people con conceived of as tending sheep or goats. When we think of Jesus as the Good Shepherd, he's not just somebody who comes along our lives, kind of the Christian version of the genie in the bottle who grants all our wishes. That's not what Jesus is like. When he comes to tend to his flock, yes, he will lead us beside the quiet waters. He will lead us into the green pastures, but as the ruler. He's in charge. He's the shepherd. And so when it says that he will come to shepherd his flock, it means he will take complete authority over his flock for everything that we need. And so right away we see that we are, are the sheep who surrender to the authority of our shepherd to take care of us. And then it says that he does this in the strength of the Lord in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. Now I've shared this before that when the Lord, all four, four letters are capitalized in Lord, it is always referring to the divine name, which we would probably say as Yahweh. When you hear the name Jehovah, it is an attempt to put into English what the divine name would have sounded like in the original Hebrew. The point is that what this is saying is in the strength of Yahweh, as distinct from every other God on the earth, in the majesty of the name of Yahweh, his God. This is the power, the strength, the name that Jesus would come in, which means he is unstoppable. And so it says of the flock, and they shall dwell secure. Secure means to continue in a place, a position, or a situation. That is the security everyone wants. That if we are welcomed into relationships, we want to stay in those relationships. If we are given a position in something, we want it to last. That's a longing. 
And what God was telling his people, even while they were going to be disciplined for their sin, he was telling them, this is what is going to come that the Savior will come, who is Christ the Lord, and he will make his flock secure because what they are given cannot be taken away from them. And that is the way it is. Then it says, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. So that means that our security is covered with any possibilities of what could happen throughout all of time, anywhere on the planet, because his authority extends to the whole earth. So when Jesus uh, was about to ascend back into heaven and he gave the great commission to his disciples. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So go and make disciples, baptizing them into the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to observe and obey everything I have commanded. And there we have our security because Jesus has all authority in heaven and on earth. And then it says, and he shall be their peace. Peace means harmonious relations and freedom from disputes, especially during the absence of war. In other words, in Jesus Christ, he shall be our peace. Now we know that God's people are not our peace. There's so many disputes in churches, you can't keep track of them. There's divisions and schisms all over the place. He himself is our peace. It, it, that's Ephesians 2.14. Ephesians 2.17 says, He came and preached peace. So in the gospel of the kingdom, Jesus proclaimed peace for the Jews first and then for all the Gentile peoples. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah 9 verse, verse 6 prophesied that Jesus would be called the Prince of Peace because he himself is our peace. What I'm bringing this to you about for your security is that this was prophesied. It was fulfilled when Jesus entered the world in Bethlehem and then he began his ministry 30 years later and he preached the good news of the kingdom. He was crucified for our sins. He was raised from the dead to be our living savior. And now it is fulfilled. That prophecy is fulfilled. And you are invited to receive the Lord Jesus Christ and experience the security of his peace. Jesus Christ is now great to the ends of the earth, all over the earth. People are being saved out of every kind of religion, philosophy, sin. Jesus Christ is great to the ends of the earth. And that's why Paul would say that there is coming a time when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And you are invited to receive the Prince of Peace to make you secure in eternal life forever. <laughs>